Hey, it's Dougie from Balto, and in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about when to use Microsoft Power Apps or when to use Microsoft Forms. So these products both have the ability to build user interfaces for forms, as in collecting data and submitting them, but they're very different in the purposes of when and why you would use them. So in this video, I'm going to be talking to you a bit about both products. We're going to look at a few examples, and we're also going to look at how difficult or easy they are to use to build applications. So let's jump in and start off by talking a bit about Power Apps. Now, Power Apps is probably actually, I, I tend to find more often than not, known more um, for, for building out forms and data collection points than Microsoft Forms is. Sometimes Microsoft Forms comes as a bit of a surprise that it is actually available to people uh, and as a product that they can get their hands on. But Power Apps essentially is more for building out very bespoke custom applications. It does require a bit more knowledge than building out a Microsoft Form and it can do a lot more. It, it essentially allows you to build out whatever type of application you want. Now, there are a few different types of Power Apps. We've got Canvas Apps, we've got Model Driven Apps, and we've got Power Apps Pages. But just to keep things simple, I'm going to be talking predominantly in this video about Canvas Power Apps because that is the type of Power Apps most people are using, and it's the most likely use case to use if you are comparing it against Microsoft Forms. So let's dive in and take a look at a Canvas Power App. So this is a mock-up, a proof of concept um, that we created before we built out the real production version of a Canvas app for the City of London. Um, basically what we were doing, we were working on a project with them where they wanted to replace um, a paper-based system with a mobile or tablet uh, application and they chose Power Apps to do that. Essentially what the app was for was to be given to their gardeners and maintenance workers that go out onto sites around London to deliver maintenance services. So they would go out with an app like this, they'd go to a particular, say, park, they'd say they were going to do some maintenance, they'd click on that, then it might say, well, what area are you in? And we might say we're in Hyde Park, and then we've got a list of tasks here that we can say we can complete or mark as issues, for example. Now, that looks quite simplistic in terms of what it uh, is doing from a user interface point of view, but actually it's quite, um, uh, it's not complex, I would say, uh, as a power up, as, as far as power apps go, but you do need to be aware of when you're building out a Canvas power app that it's not just um, as simple as drag and drop. You do need to know a bit about formulas and essentially how power apps works. So this is how the uh, editing interface works. It's a little bit like PowerPoint in a sense that on the left-hand side here we can see our screens, a bit like in PowerPoint where you've got slides. So we've got my home screen, I've got my task screen, and I've got my site screen. Then within a screen you've got different components which make up the page. So you can see I've got these buttons, I've got this image here, and then on a button this is where you need to know about formulas because um, you can see here I've got this formula which will navigate me to the sites page um, and it's using a fade so when I click on that button it will fade to that next page. Now the reason why it's called Canvas Apps is because literally all of this is started by building out from a blank canvas. You add a new screen, it's completely blank. Everything that you see on these pages we've had to manually add to the page and this is one of the biggest differences between using a Power App to build out a form and using a Microsoft form um, because Microsoft Forms is very simplistic, very basic, but you, you do not have to kind of build out the interface. It's built for you. You just add fields to the form. So it's much simpler. Um, so the first kind of comparison I would say is you would only really use Power Apps or Canvas Power App over Microsoft Forms if you're wanting to build out something that's very bespoke. It's got maybe a certain journey that you want it to follow. Um, maybe it's got some functionality that Forms doesn't offer, so things like taking photos. And actually, in this real example, when we when we built this for City of London, eventually, obviously this is just a very, very simplistic proof of concept to show you. Um, but in the real version, we were taking pictures. Um, so for, for example, if uh, they wanted to report an issue, maybe there's a gate that's fallen off in Hyde Park, 
They could take a picture with that. It would log it, go back into the back office, create tasks, automations, workflows. All these things are very bespoke. And yes, you can get so far with Microsoft Forms, um, but Power Apps will unlock a lot more functionality um, than what you can achieve with, with Forms. So if you got started using Microsoft Forms and realize you've kind of come up against some limitations, you can probably achieve them by using Canvas Power Apps. However, as I say, it's a bit more difficult, it takes a bit more time to get to grips with, but it's not impossible. You, you could get started with this today. I just wanted to pause for a second to ask a quick favor. If you're enjoying this video, please do like the video, but also subscribe to our channel as it helps us grow and share our content with a wider audience. We have all sorts of videos about Power App, SharePoint, and all things Microsoft 365. So go and check out our videos and some of our playlists um, to take a look at other types of content that we have. And if you need any help or professional services related to Microsoft, then you can contact us by clicking on the link in our bio. So that was Power Apps, but let's talk a bit about Microsoft Forms. So what is Microsoft Forms? A bit like in terms of comparing this against uh, Canvas Apps we're looking at, it is for building out forms for collecting information. They're perfect for much quicker types of um, uh, scenarios like um, getting feedback. So we use them internally about it for things like project feedback, events feedback, or even just small things like maybe we're organizing a Christmas party and we want to know how many people want to order the turkey, how many people want to order the beef or the vegetarian option. We can quickly knot together a form using Microsoft Forms. In terms of comparing the licensing as well, I should mention that you tend to find Canvas apps and Microsoft Forms are both included in the licenses you already have. Your kind of business premium licenses, your e-enterprise licenses and things like that, they're included automatically. So if it's coming down to a cost decision, um, it, it, both are included in licenses, but you will tend to find the Microsoft Forms, especially for, for lightweight types of scenarios, are much quicker. So from a time perspective on the cost um, kind of estimations, it's much quicker to use Microsoft Forms. So let's jump in and take a look at some examples. So this is Microsoft Forms. As you see, there's a bunch of different example forms I've knocked together here and some real ones. So for example, we run some events related to AI and we collect responses, some feedback on those events using Microsoft Forms because it's so quick and simple to put together. There's all sorts of other things we, we've trialed in the past before so booking uniform ordering event feedbacks um things like that even employee satisfaction surveys and and that sort of thing um, are often delivered through microsoft forms because they're so quick and simple to put together there are some templates from microsoft as well things around event feedback um research employee satisfaction um things like that but it's really easy to create and you can either create them as a form or you could even create it as a quiz style if you wanted to make it almost like you're testing people's knowledge. And we have helped customers in the past before build out Microsoft Forms, which are essentially testing people's understanding or knowledge of things, maybe about compliance information as an example. So people have a, say, 20 question survey and then if they get, say, 80% right, they've passed and they get a tick in the box and we can store that piece of information somewhere. Or say, for example, if they get less than that, maybe we send a little workflow notification to somebody to say, this person really needs to have some additional training followed up with. So those are the types of things we can do as well using Power Automate as a uh, workflow engine tool. But we can create a new form by clicking on the new form button across the top. And then you can see it's very, it's very basic, very simplistic, but that's actually one of the, the pros of this. You don't need to know anything about formulas or building or creating interfaces or design or user experience, anything like that. You're building it out yourself. So let's say, for example, we're building this out and this is going to be some event feedback. One of the cool things I like about this as well is there's a little bit of AI built into this. So because I put an event feedback as a title, it's already starting to recommend some questions, some fields that I should put into my form. So do you have any suggestions to improve the future events? Yes, I'd like to add that. Uh, what did you like about the event? What did you like most about the event? Or what, sorry, what do you like least? What do you like the most? How satisfied with the event? So we've already got most of the questions that we need. And this is building this up based on what it knows about the, the type of fields I want to add. 
So I can then just click on add, and then there we go. We've got some fields now already added to our form. They're really simple to customize. If I wanted to click on this, I could add new options if I wanted to. I could remove options. I could drag and drop them and, and move them around. I can add brand new fields to this as well. So I can click on add new. And I could click to add a choice field, a text field, rating. So providing sort of stars, numbers, or uh, hearts, thumb likes, things like that. Um, it's, it's reasonably customizable and for basic lightweight forms, feedbacks, surveys, questionnaires, the, it has everything you need. And in fact, actually, you can style this up a little bit. It's not, again, it's not overly um, customizable. You can add your own kind of colors and things like that. You can put a logo in and now there's starting to be a few different types of styles as well that you can add. But it's quite basic. Um, you can even add a bit of background music, but if I'm totally honest, I don't really like that feature. I don't. I think it's a bit distracting and can cause a bit of disorientation and confusion to users when they open up a form and starts jingling music at them. Um, so I don't tend to use that when I'm using Microsoft Forms. Um, but as I say, you can brand this up to make it look uh, a little bit more like your company. Put your logo in here, a bit of a description, what the form's used for, things like that. You can set background images and colors um, so you, you can style it up. You can also preview what it's going to look like. So when you click on preview, you can see what it looks like on a desktop computer. But the feature I really like is you can also see what it looks like on a mobile phone and just make sure that it's usable um, in that sense. Once you've submitted a bit of information, so let's just put in some fake information into here for now, then click on submit. Um, we can come back out of here and then we can actually see all the responses inside of Microsoft Forms here as well and even open it in Excel if we wanted to um, to see that that data uh, what's stored in the background. But you can see some high level analysis on here of what type of responses you're getting. Once you get more data, you can see little charts and things like that. So it's a nice way of breaking down that information. But as I say, typically most people would export it out to Excel uh, to do any reporting on that information that they wanted to. It's also worth mentioning as well that you can do uh, like branching as well in here, which is pretty useful. So say, for example, if somebody was to answer that they were extremely satisfied with our event, the next page that they might bounce to might say, so glad that you enjoyed our event. Could you give us a little quote that we could use for our website or something like that? Or if they said not at all satisfied, you might bounce them to another page where it says, I'm so sorry that you've had a terrible time. Could you provide us a little bit more detail about what we could have done better or how we could improve next time? So you can include branching as part of Microsoft Forms as well. Then once you're happy with your form, you click on collect responses. There's a number of ways that you can share this form. Um, so you could either have it that anyone can respond. That means anyone in the world. So one of the kind of benefits of Microsoft Forms over Canvas Power App is that you can share this with anyone in the world. So anyone can use it. Whereas a Canvas app, you have to be licensed and you have to be essentially like an internal user. You can license external users to come in, but that's a whole new kettle of fish. Whereas with a Microsoft um, form, you can share this out natively to external people. They can use that form uh, to get cracking. But as I say, it's quite simplistic compared to a lot of other Power Apps. So if you wanted to look for, an ex for a very customizable Power Apps experience, which is external, you'd need to use Power Apps Pages. We can also share it internally. So if I just wanted to share it with Valto, I could do. We could get it to record a name or it could be completely anonymous if we wanted to. And we can also um, ask whether or not uh, it's just one response. So say, for example, if it was a customer, uh, say an employee satisfaction form, we probably only want one response. We don't want multiple. So we could select that. We could also limit it to specific people. So if we just want it from feedback from a certain department, we could do that as well. We can copy the link or we could even make a short link if we wanted to. Um, shorten that URL right down. I mean, copy that, put it into an email, put it into a Teams message, something like that. Uh, we can share it with specific people and they would get an automatic email or even a Teams message. Now, what I think is really cool, and I love this and I use this all the time, is it will also generate a QR code. Now, this is perfect for things like at the end of a PowerPoint presentation, uh, a webinar or a conference or an event, you could have the QR code up there. And if you scan that with your phone, you would then be able to open it up and then submit uh, feedback directly from that. So you don't need to go to a link. You don't need to type anything in. You just scan that and it automatically open up the form. Another way that I've seen this used is on posters. So around the, the business, you've got some posters, maybe some feedback, maybe it's uh, signing up um, to uh, register for something. 
You could have that as a poster, have the QR code on the poster. People scan that as they're walking past, um, and that's a great way of getting them into the form. Or finally, you can also generate an embed. So if you wanted to embed this, because it allows for external feedback, uh, external people to submit, you could embed this onto your personal, uh, your public website, or any other type of um, sort of customized web page, as an example. So that was Microsoft Forms. So that was Power Apps versus Microsoft Forms. Um, if you've got any questions about any of that, let me know by dropping a comment below. If you enjoy the video, do like and subscribe to our channel for future content. If you need any help with either setting up a Power App or a Microsoft Form, or even just helping decide which way to go, we do offer professional services as well. So you can contact us. There's a link below, um, which is valto.co.uk forward slash YouTube. Uh, use that contact form. You can get in touch with us, and one of our Microsoft experts will book in a free consultation with you to discuss your requirements further. Thank you for watching this video and keep your eyes peeled for future Valto content.